Hi there, Sam Medina again from JakeTheEvilHere.com and Darkfell.com. I'm going to do a quick little video here on drawing hands, uh, especially for those of you who want to break into the comics industry. One of the things, uh, if you're trying to break in as, as far as joining up with a uh, one of the major studios, not as an independent, uh, I mean, you want to do this either way, but especially if you're trying to, if you're going to send a sample to DC, Marvel, Dark Horse, Image, or, or one of those big ones uh, in particular, one of the things you got to master is drawing hands. I'm not going to say I'm a master, but I'm definitely better than I used to be. Uh, one of the things that editors will look for when they're looking at your portfolio is they're going to be asking themselves a question, does he avoid drawing hands and feet? If your character's hands are always in their pockets or somehow off panel, Chances are, um, a, ga a gambling man is going to bet that your, your portfolio is going to get rejected because uh, they want to see those hands. Uh, not because hands are, well, hands are very important because we do so much with them, but it's also because it's an indicator that your skills are not as complete. If you can draw a hand, you can draw a lot of other things. Hands are tricky. That's why so many people avoid drawing them. Uh, myself included. I used to do a lot of fists uh, <laughs> a few years ago and not that long ago. So uh, usually I start with a uh, I'll rough in with you know like this with a uh, non-photo blue pencil and I'll create kind of a, kind of a little bit of a uh, almost a egg shape or uh, yeah, kind of an egg-shaped oval, and so we have that that shape going. Because your knuckles aren't—they're not all together. A lot of people do hands like this, where you basically got a square, and it's it. You know, let's see if we can get this over. Oh, actually, I'll do it over here. Well, they do. Where you basically got a uh, a square, and that's not what a hand looks like. It's not a block. Uh, so I'll start off with that shape, and then sometimes I'll use rectangular shapes just to start creating the the illusion of where the fingers are, and to give myself an idea of the, what where the foreshortening is going. Uh, something like this, but it's a guide; it's not where, what it's going to finish up as. And then I'll start laying in where my knuckles are. Uh, some people do it differently. I like to do it this way because that way I know where my fingers are, are going to be coming from, and. Uh, Usually I go with rectangular shapes for the fingers, sometimes cylinders. In this case we're going to do kind of a little mixture of both. Uh, we got our little rectangular shape here. And then we're going to bring another rectangular shape down for the next uh, section of the finger. And then we're going to have a foreshortened one here for that last part of that middle finger. We're going to give that little curve for the end of the finger. And we'll do the same thing here. We're And the same thing for uh, the pinky finger here. Now we have one finger that is uh, sticking up. And here goes the thumb. And we'll tighten that up now. Start giving it some indicators of shadow and light and all that. And we'll give ourselves a little shadow over here too. That indicate 
fingers are casting a shadow. A little shadow work for the wrinkles in the glove. And there we go, we got ourselves at least a halfway decent hand pointing upward. Hope this has been helpful. Thanks for watching. Check us out over at jaketheevilhair.com and darkfell.com. And you can actually download some of our books over at graphically.com slash basement dash studios. Have a good one.